Hey everybody, it's me, Laura, and today we're going to go ahead and create some more ripple blade patterns, and I love these things. The clay has been rolled out on a number one setting through my Atlas machine, and I'm just going to go ahead and square this up. I went ahead and this clay, I want to say the width of this is about an inch to an inch and a quarter. So when you go ahead and figure out, okay, what size do I make this? You could go with it fairly small like I'm doing here, but you can also lengthen it out too. So right here, I'm using the little wider uh, rippled um, blade and I'm just pressing down onto it. And then I'm taking the smaller one and I'm just digging into the clay just a little bit, just at an angle so it kind of goes into the clay and it gives you this really interesting effect. Once I do that and I get that done, I'm going to go ahead and take my other blade. I'm going to just cut off that top part because it didn't look really, really nice. And then I'm going to lift this up with my blade. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and curl the edges on this. So it's going to look like almost like a, a potted plant or a column, if you will. It, it, it was such a neat form when I made this. I, I just loved it. <laughs> and this will give you pattern number eight. Pattern nine, we're going to go ahead and make a little ball, and then we're just going to go ahead and poke a hole in it with our knitting needle. Ripple pattern number 10 is really going to be just taking three little balls, placing them on the form, and then taking your knitting needle and poking holes into each one of them. Pattern 11 is really quite simple. I'm taking my knitting needle, I'm just going to poke holes around the bottom part of this form. Pattern number 12 is where I think this particular Zentangle style pattern gets interesting. And what I did was on the second row up, I started to poke holes right along in the indented areas of that pattern. Now this was interesting to me, but I was like, no, we need to add more. So I added in two more holes in each little section and it really, in my head, brought this particular pattern to life. Pattern 13, I skipped a rippled section and started placing more poked holes in the indentations. But this time, I didn't place them at the bottom of the ripple, but more in the center. I noticed you start to see the pattern better with this placement. Pattern 14, I decided to go back and place more poked holes on the bottom of this piece. And when I did so, it was on the more raised areas of the ripple pattern. Okay, here I have all the different ripple patterns I created in this video. Please use this for study and reference. And if you like this video, please like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I'd love to know what you're thinking. And as always, I am sending out my biggest hugs to each of you, and I hope you have a fantastic day.